A city is a dense weave of overlapping stories, most of which we're unaware of as we chart our own course through life. But when a device we depend on ceases to function, we can encounter lives running in parallel to our own and realize that through them, we have a shared past and a shared present. I like to see cars work the way should, they should work. You know, I like to, uh, when I see a car that's not running right, I know it's not running right and I want to put it right. It's as simple as that. And plus, I want to make sure my customer makes it to their destination um, in one piece and um, with some reliability. Customers keep saying not many people do it. It's nice to see a shop doing traditional stuff. They go, oh, we found an upholster at last. So that's satisfying when people appreciate someone doing an old-fashioned job, if you like. <laughs> Isn't that great? Well, if you, have a, if you have a good customer, half the battle is won. But there are some customers that you spend more time talking to them than fixing the car. So I like the, my customers. They are decent. They are very decent people. Uh, appreciate, appreciate what I do. I was making instruments from a very early age. I knew I wanted to be a violin maker from probably 10 or 11. It's, it's never boring. It's always, always different. They're always changing. The violin's incredibly complex and versatile and varied. You know, no, no two instruments are the same. Every job is different. Every job is a challenge. No one job is the same. It's, a, it's completely, it's a, it's a challenge. Every, every job we put on the bench is a new challenge, and I love a challenge. I would always want to be fiddle above the screwdriver in my hand to do this. That's what I enjoy. The wife enjoys selling. My name is, it's a very long name. Lost me in that George. Uh, Jan called me a rose, but my friend called me Minda. First of all, I don't like electronics because it's, it's I've been, Getting a shock. I prefer to do wing, doing sales. <laughs> Got my little tribe here. <laughs> one is Dunstan Bramble, the other one is Singh, the other one is Didier. I started off with Dunstan first, and somehow magically we kind of gelled together, just me and him. And then the next person that came in. The same thing continues. We, we move together as one. And for that to happen, it's not going to be very easy. We've got a workshop here, you're on the first floor, which we've got um, four people working with Philippe and Gareth, Alex and Carmen. And, uh, and on the top floor, we've got Gianni only. Gianni works on double basses, and that's all he does. Uh, and on this floor, we work on violins and violas and cellos, and we have Carmen who specialises in bows. Every so often I'll buy a fish, it's a great big African fish, well seasoned, and they, they love it. Um, if it's not that, it's either we're probably doing some go-karting or, or every now and then we go out and have a bit of fun. Who's the best? Of course I'm the best. <laughs> I think it was Singh actually. Singh is not as heavy as Dunstan. <laughs> Philippe and Alex are from France. Uh, Gareth is English, but has worked abroad in France and Italy. Carmen is Spanish, Gianni is Italian. We've had Germans working here before, Portuguese, uh, South African, Dutch, uh, Australian. No Americans. <laughs> Thomas is the guy who works for me, and he's from Hungary. One day I was just working, he um, knocks on the door and just was asking for work, said he was a upholsterer. I'd say he was halfway to being a 
pretty qualified pole Stewart. A bit rough around the edges, but now he's very good at all you know, all the work he does is very good. You have to get on because it's just two of you in the shop all day. I've probably seen him more than my wife. And he um, works very, very hard. One of the best workers I've ever had, that's for sure. Didier, I don't know, he's taking, he's taking his time. He's not ripe yet. <laughs> <laughs> takes time <laughs> and experience. The only way to learn really is through apprenticeships. You have to see a tradesman at work, I think, to do the poultry to any sort of good level. He does a lot of running around here. So without him, I mean, I don't think um, things would run as smooth as it does. He's, don't forget the tea. He's <laughs> good at tea. Repair is a language that takes time to learn. In amateur hands, it's a patch-up job, a temporary fix. In professional hands, it's something else, a talent to mend, to heal, to extend an object's lifespan. Throw away those old things, they say, as they build in obsolescence to ensure new purchases. But among the back streets, you'll find a rebellious tradition that honors recovery. I was born in the Commonwealth of Dominica. I arrived here in the um, 22nd of, of uh, September, 1958. I was 17, you know, because I was married before I met Rose. And I lost my wife in November uh, 2001. J.C. Moses is named after Joe um, Chi, who was somebody that I met um, many years ago. And he took me under his wings and, and taught me a hell of a lot. Very inspirational, inspirational um, person. He died in 99, 1999. Even here right now, there are tools that he used to handle that many years ago um, that I will always treasure. Because yeah, he, was, he was special. You really can change the look of a piece just by putting a different fabric on from looking old dowdy to a very modern contemporary piece of furniture. You pull it slightly wrong and it just tears and it's, you hear that noise and it's the worst noise you can imagine that and you know it's not good and you look around the other side and you see a big rip across the seat and you know you've got to do it again. And the other thing you're always petrified is once you've done the job, the child comes in with dirty hands, eating chocolate and they, the first thing they do, they want to jump on it, think fingers on the job and it's a pain. Don't choose white fabric. <laughs> There's a lot of unknown, a lot of mystery around how the violin works. So um, specific and integral to a player, it becomes so much part of their body that you have anything done, it can be enormously upsetting, even if it's a good change. You might, it'll take you ages to get used to it. I've had the Carmen gear now for about eight years. And that one I've managed to gradually get it back to the standard that I want to I can take it to bits and put it back together and uh, tune it, screwdriver. It's got character. It's a good car. <laughs> yeah, violins are typically made of spruce for the fronts um, because it's got high tensile strength. It's, it can be made quite thin. It's very flexible. It won't crack or break. The ribs, the sides, and the back and the neck, the scroll and the peg box are made of maple. We're looking not always for the most um, beautiful wood. Sometimes we're looking for quite plain woods. But we get people come up in vans outside from Romania and uh, some Hungarians come by every so often and they come by in a van and they have the van, it's full of wood. You know, it's Bosnian maple or maple from their area. And they sometimes have really beautiful timber. Prices are usually very high. I think to keep the old stuff going is essential. The craftsmanship from that time was so wonderful and the woods they used, which you can't use now, it'd be a shame just to throw that away and lose that. Now, once upon a time, it was a good business to be in. The olden days, if you one is um, working on, on a television or a hi-fi and it's, uh, they got problem, you cannot solve it on your own, you would phone the manufacturer concern and they would give you technical advice. They would have to hold stock for about seven years before it's completely obsolete. Today, it's completely different. 
If you don't have an account with the manufacturers and spending thousands and thousands of pounds with them, you are on your own. I get the impression that um, designing cars, yes, to be comfortable, to be pretty, um, to attract the eye so you can go and spend your big money and buy them. But to me, they're not as durable as the older ones. I just thought it's a money-making, to me, they use the word scam, it's a money-making scam. They don't have to do it, I don't think so. But sometimes I'm disgusted by the things that I, I see that I have to change. Um, they make more money on parts, I think, than selling cars most probably. My experience is that there's lots of young people involved in music. There's many people still playing. Uh, parents are still promoting their kids into playing music. It's still seen as a very vibrant, useful topic to learn, you know, as a subject. To be able to learn an instrument and have that versatility, just as a, an experiential thing, as a social thing, it has on many, many different layers, its levels. It's an it's a incredible, I think, resource to have. I miss making. Yeah, yeah, I do miss making. I would like to be able to make more. But you know, I, I made I made instruments until about 12 years ago. As I was doing restoration work until about six years ago, and then I kind of more or less stopped major restoration. And I advise in the workshops and overseas jobs. But I enjoy what I do. I enjoy meeting lots of different people. Uh, I like the sort of challenges of the work that we get, which is very varied work we have. Repair embraces the marks and wear, the deep worn wrinkles and acquired scuffs that give objects history and character. Repairers work anonymously to restore form of function. The objects they've touched survive and bring their stories with them.